Okay, let's take a look at the solutions for exam two. Um, here's the first question we're looking at. Um, and some of the questions are the same for both exams. Some are different. So we'll look at the yellow exam first. Looking at the first question, um, do reading, um, do the box plus suggest reading um, affects response time? So what we're going to do in this case, you need to, you, you need to um, compare that to the control group. That's the group that has that's not texting or reading. And you can see in the box plot, this middle line, this is a median. And so because this median is more than this median, we have some hint that uh, reading does influence um, response time, since response time is here on the x-axis, I mean the y-axis. And so we would say it does. The other thing, how it influences, it makes people, because the box plot has more dispersion, it makes people um, respond differently. And so you can see there's, uh, that's how it affects it also through its dispersion or its spread. Second question B, about 75% of the typing group has a response time greater than three seconds. This is the typing group. Here again, remember box plots are broken into quartiles, 25%, 25, 25, and 25. So the top three here, you see this is 75%. So about 75% of them have a response time greater than three seconds. You can see that there. Um, and then the next piece, does typing influence ability to maintain average speed? And so the, it's kind of a trick question that the medians are approximately the same, but you can see this widespread means there's a lot of variance that people, that typing does influence people. Some people slow down more people slow down and more people speed up. So you can see there is variance. There's a larger spread, so it does affect it. On the next question here, we're talking about regression. So you, here you didn't have to run it. We just use this language here. And so in this case, we're looking at the specific situation of, of um, how many hours in the tutoring center and your final average in statistics. And so if that's positive, that means that as one variable increases, the other increases. In this case, as your hours increase in the student center, your hours, your final average will increase also. Linear means that when you plot the data that you collected, it forms a line or there's a, a pattern, a linear pattern, and the dots line up. That's what that means. And then strong is related to the correlation and its correlation coefficient, which means it's either close to one or the core, uh, the R value is greater than critical value. Um, the points form a perfect line, right? That's what we're talking about with strong and correlation. And then um, using this equation here, your average is equal to, um, your average here is equal to um, this value, which is the y-intercept, plus the slope times the number of hours you're in the study center. So what does the slope mean? This 0.774, you see how I did this in class many times. The final average increase 0.774. That's the y variable when you increase your study time by one hour. So when you increase your study time, your average goes up by 0.774 points. How do you make a prediction? You substitute it in. And then if someone spent 10 more hours than somebody else, again, this is how much your slope is how much you increase um, by the hour. So you just multiply that 10 times the slope, and that tells you how the point difference. On question three, those are the probability questions. So you can take a look. First one is just taking the total who live off campus divided by the total. Here's an or situation, so you have to add for sure. 39, how many uh, do no activities, 39 out of 100, plus those on campus, 33 out of 100. But notice there is overlap because these, these events are not disjoint. We have 9 here, and so you have to subtract out that 9. Next question, same question, but this time it's given. And so no activities given that you live on campus, and so in this case, our denominator is going to be 33. That's the on-campus part. And so you can see we end up with, it's a different question. We're only looking at a different population. Um, and the qu uh, question of both was probably, that's a multiplication, both the first and the second. And notice there is, uh, you have to adjust this one because there is a dependency, right? This 
second one depends on the first one and so we have that sl slight change there and this is not a probability model nowhere here are there's probabilities at all there's no sum that equals probabilities where you equal to one this equals a hundred but that's just a hundred people not the prob hundred percent or a probability so this is not a probability model at all and then the last question here um the insurance company we did this one in multiple places the written homework the online homework the extra exam problems we did it in class in the examples so we've seen this problem multiple times and you can see here the insurance uh, is worth two hundred dollars so again the expected value for the profit so the insurance company that's the random variable x your profit represent the profit so this is what um, the insurance company makes two hundred dollars this percent of the time and then um, negative it loses negative ninety nine thousand eight hundred dollars this percent of the time and to calculate expected value it's just x times p of x x times p of x again this number comes from one minus that percent gives you that number and so when you do that the company makes seventy two dollars and fifty cents per policy and if they wanted to make a profit that's seventy two dollars point fifty x times a hundred thousand how many policies it needs to sell about thirteen eighty and then the blue one the blue one um, similar this question similar to the yellow one this one here is the same as the other exam the insurance problem is a little different different numbers so you can take a look it's 250 in this case they lose 199,000 and so when you do your calculation again um, this time the insurance company loses five dollars per policy so in this case it's impossible for them to make a profit because they lose five dollars and then this one here is very similar the only difference was the question here B um, about 75 percent of the typing group has a response time greater than seven seconds here's seven seconds it's 75 percent of the group has the response time less than seven seconds so you can take a look at that there so you can see seven and the 75 is below so that's why this is false and that's it the other solutions are the same